Did you know that the first spacecraft to land softly on the moon was the Soviet Union's Luna 9 mission, which launched in 1966? Up until now, all we could do was sort of shoot items in the direction of the moon, hoping that if we were lucky, they would just smash into it and send some data along the way. Furthermore, did you know that this basic early mission was also completed first by the Soviet Union? Their Luna 2 spacecraft made history in 1959 by being the first artificial object ever to make contact with the moon or any other celestial body outside of Earth, for that matter. As you are well aware, Russia attempted a second soft landing on the moon with Luna 25 in August of 2023. However, that mission was unsuccessful, and their spaceship crashed on the moon's surface powerlessly, leaving behind yet another crater and a fresh batch of human waste that will be remembered for all time. That appears to be a really significant decline in the ability to land on the moon over a time span when you would think that technology would have advanced by several orders of magnitude. Perhaps Russia is just bad. They're not winning any popularity contests, that's for sure. However, in 2023, the Japanese business iSpace also made an attempt to set foot on the moon, but they were unsuccessful. We are aware that Japanese manufacturing and technology represent the pinnacle of contemporary technology. Additionally, India Chandrayaan-2 failed a few years before to that. Considering that India is home to a large number of the world's most intelligent and highly educated engineers, something must be going on here, right? Why is landing on the moon so difficult? This is cosmic era. You might also be unaware that the moon has an extremely peculiar and irregular gravitational field. Thus, the gravitational pull of Earth is constant throughout. No matter where you are on the Earth's periphery, there remains a constant pull towards the center. Once you are extremely high above the Earth, the force of gravity begins to diminish, but it does so in a very smooth and predictable manner. Regarding the moon, this is untrue. Scientists have long noticed that the moon's gravitational field is uneven across its periphery, with some areas experiencing higher gravitational pull than others. Specifically, a small number of impact basins tend to be covered by the more surprisingly strong gravitational field, indicating that the excess mass from massive asteroid impacts is concentrated under these basins and is influencing the moon's gravitational attraction. 2019 saw the discovery of an odd mass beneath the moon's south pole confirmed by astronomers. Now, the precise nature of this surplus material is unknown, although it is thought to be about 2 quadrillion tons. Yes, I am aware of your recent mental wanderings. This might be a long-ago extraterrestrial mothership hidden beneath the moon. Now, it's probably not, but anything may theoretically be beneath it until we know for sure. More practically speaking, though, this mass is situated beneath the South Pole Aiken Basin, a massive oval-shaped impact crater on the moon's far side that is several kilometers deep and 2,000 kilometers wide. It originated when a massive object struck the moon about 4 billion years ago. Furthermore, it is evident from simply gazing at the moon that it has experienced some rather significant blows during its existence, which very likely have deposited a great deal of these mass concentrations in wildly unpredictable places, producing a very unpredictable and random force of gravity, which will consequently have an unpredictable and random impact on any kind of spacecraft that happens to be passing over one of these on its way to make a moon landing. Although it is not the only reason why landing on the moon would be challenging, it is one of the more intriguing ones to take into account. When you start poring over history books, the first thing you'll notice is that most attempts to land anything on the moon have ended in disaster. This is not shocking considering that not much could be expected from the initial initiatives in the late 50 seconds and early 60 seconds. However, NASA's success record did not exactly inspire confidence when they proceeded into their surveyor program in 1966, which was a series of robotic moon landings that set the stage for Apollo. Out of the seven surveyor missions, one went off course and crashed into the moon, and we don't even really know what happened to the second mission that lost radio contact with Earth two minutes before the landing attempt. Obviously, there has never been a problem with a human landing on the moon thanks to Apollo, and that brings us to our first explanation for why so many lunar landings go wrong. Robots cannot, or at least could not, solve problems in the moment like people can. Thus, the initial Apollo 11 lunar landing would have been unsuccessful, if not for Neil Armstrong's exceptional flying abilities. The Eagle veered off course as soon as their lunar module broke away from the main stack. Furthermore, there was nothing unforeseen that the computer assistants could make up for. Following predetermined estimates alone would have brought the crew perilously close to disaster. At this point, Neil Armstrong had to adopt a Luke Skywalker persona and trust his gut feeling over the targeting computer. Using all manual control and with only a few seconds of rocket fuel left, he made a moon landing. Since a seasoned Navy pilot cannot always be present to fix issues on the fly, these autonomous robotic missions necessitate that every last detail of the mission proceed exactly as planned. If not, failure will soon rise to the top of the list of possibilities. 
While the moon's distance from the solar system is not particularly great, it is still far enough that controlling a moon landing remotely is not possible. Two and a half seconds would be the typical delay time for a round-trip transmission, which is far from precise enough to accomplish a safe landing. All of that seems a little odd, though, given that Mars is much farther away from the moon than the moon and NASA has a fairly good record of landing people there over the past few decades. In fact, Mars can provide us some insight into why landing softly on the moon is so challenging. Although there is still a lot of difficulty involved in landing on Mars, the presence of an atmosphere facilitates the procedure. Mars' atmosphere is much thinner than Earth's, but it is also much denser than that of the moon. Mars has a very little atmosphere. This implies that there is some utility for a parachute on Mars. This is what makes a difference. Although a parachute cannot guarantee a gentle landing on Mars by itself, it can bleed off spacecraft and give the lander enough time to descend safely and intelligently. Then, you can utilize something as basic as airbags to lessen the effect of a lighter cargo during the last stage of touchdown. However, larger NASA rovers have successfully delivered the payload to the surface using a mix of sky cranes and retro rockets. You cannot utilize any of these material on the moon since it lacks an atmosphere. It takes a totally propulsive landing on the moon. These are really challenging to do. Even the SpaceX Falcon 9, which now makes landings powered by rockets appear simple, heavily depends on the Earth's atmosphere to control its fall through aerodynamic drag and grid fins. Thus, these lunar landers must use only a highly precisely timed sequence of rocket burns to go from orbital velocity to zero velocity with respect to the moon's surface. That's a significant challenge for anyone to meet. Let's also acknowledge that the area of the moon where these contemporary missions are trying to land presents additional challenges. Moon landings used to use the least resisting route possible. Thus, the initial impact of Luna 2 followed essentially a ballistic trajectory. The visible side of the moon's center is approximately where the Soviet probe struck when it was thrown there. The collision occurred roughly 30 degrees north of center and exactly in the middle of the east-west axis. Then, when it came time for more controlled landings, like Apollo, we would always aim for the region immediately surrounding the equator on the visible side of the moon. In this manner, the spaceship will launch from the equator of the Earth, go directly to the equator of the moon, and then return as flatly as feasible, following a largely two-dimensional trajectory. The first people to break this cycle were the Chinese, who made a soft landing on the moon's far side. The moon's south pole has been the focus of the most recent wave of lunar excursions, including the unsuccessful iSpace and Luna 25 landers, which began in 2019 with Chang-4. We believe that the deep craters here will hold enormous reserves of water ice, which is significant for reasons beyond just giving us something to drink, making this an extremely crucial zone for the future of human exploration on the moon. Hydrogen, which we can use as fuel, and oxygen, which we can breathe, are the two components that make up water. This implies that in addition to finding a way to land our vehicle in a polar orbit around the moon, we also need to devise a considerably more intricate three-dimensional flight path. However, this does not imply that landing at the lunar south pole is impossible. With the success of Chandrayaan-3, the Indian Space Agency has demonstrated that they were able to achieve this goal ahead of schedule because they were fortunate enough to have failed with Chandrayaan-2 first. I believe the most of people would concur that trying something new, failing, and then using what you learned to try again is the best approach to get better at almost everything. Unless you're trying something like free solo mountain climbing which is a completely different matter entirely and in which case you won't be around to learn from your mistakes. You may keep throwing robots into space and learning as you go as long as someone is still ready to fund the project. This also applies to sending robots to the moon. As previously mentioned, NASA experienced numerous lunar landing failures prior to mastering the art of success. Only the final three of the nine Project Ranger flights, which attempted a soft landing on the moon between 1961 and 1965, were successful. The other attempts were largely failures. Five of the seven surveyor missions made it to Earth, indicating that they were largely successful. And then all six of the Apollo missions that succeeded in reaching the moon without encountering any problems were carried out perfectly. And the 21st century race to the moon's south pole is enacting the same bargain, 60 years later. Sometimes, despite the incredible advancements in computer technology, transistors, and microchips, we still need to suffer terrible failures before we can achieve success. Before we can run, we must first learn how to walk. Come back here every week for more information on anything relating to interstellar exploration and the aerospace sector. If you like the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up today and subscribe to the Cosmic Era for more videos just like this.